We are back. Very exciting data we have here looking at the returns within the region and the asset classes. It suddenly pays to be in Kenya, but then we are beginning to see an emergent sector, which is a private equity sector with IR internal rates of return of between 13 to 17 percent. Eva Wariga is an executive director at the East Africa Venture Capital Association. She's just helping us demystify the opportunity with regards to the private equity market and the venture capital market. Eva, just before we went to a break, you gave us an overview of the region. Sure. But then there's always this question people ask what is private equity what is venture capital in right. brief just help us understand what that well, when you're talking about funding what does that mean briefly? okay so private equity is um, institutional capital first of all okay and it often plays with private businesses so we uh, we obviously have private equity that invests in public markets but for the bulk of our investment to concentrate them on um, private businesses. So we look at this as capital that is going to businesses that are not within the listed market. Okay. And now for East Africa, our private equity is what we call growth capital. Okay, so growth capital. Yes, we invest in businesses that are looking for growth um, whether it's in expansion, improving the operational efficiencies, getting into new markets, or even targeting a different demographic. Okay. So for the bulk of the private institutional capital in East Africa, we call we refer to it as growth capital. Now, growth capital <laughs> also has its categories. Oh, wow. We have growth capital that went, uh, looks at early stage businesses, okay. those that are still starting up, probably do not have financial track record yet, um, prototyping in them. Um, and that can be angel investors uh, or venture capital. Oh, so venture okay. Capital so venture capital, you're sort of that, starting uh, an ideation yeah. and conceptualization. Yeah, yeah, all the way to maybe year one, two, or three. You're still okay. not revenue generating yet. Okay, fantastic. Uh, but the concept is tested. The concept is tested. You probably have an identified market. Okay. Yeah. And then but there's but how private does, equity. And then there's private equity. That is now into mature businesses. Into mature businesses. Yes. And how does the, what is the role of uh, East Africa Venture Capital Association? Do you connect people with investors? Do you identify opportunities and try to help them get funding? What is your key role as a stakeholder in this space? All right. For us, we positioned ourselves as the market sellers. Okay. So our primary role is to promote East Africa as a capital destination. Oh, well done. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. And um, what we do is try and do the reports like the one you just highlighted. Yes. And uh, provide data because we feel that the markets become empowered when there's information made available to um, allow investors to make informed decisions. Okay. And then we also engage with the external stakeholders to a lot of um, education to the market about how to interact with private equity okay. and what to look out for. So, so we really need to be following you if you're trying to understand yes. that space. Yes. Okay, we'll certainly do that. Now help us understand, what are the kind of investors that are actually coming into private equity? Are they local institutions that are putting money aside? Yeah. Are they foreign? Where are they coming from? Right. Help us understand that right. environment. So we just did a report, Private Equity in East Africa Survey, alongside KPMG. Okay, maybe we can actually put up the first chat there. Yeah. From our graphics team. Yeah, okay. and so for that report, we found that the bulk of in investment institutional capital that supports private equity is still um, foreign, largely from development finance institutions um, and uh, commercial pension funds from okay. other markets. Having said that, I will give it to the local institutional investors. They've started to see the potential that private equity has um, in supporting or diversifying their portfolio's returns. And so I think uh, the st statistics from RBA, which is the Kenyan regulator, is that um, as of June this year, we have about 910 million Kenyan shillings invested in private equity. By oh, wow, that's a good funds. number. Yes. And that's coming from literally zero, two, three years ago. Yes. Wow. Um, it's still a 0.08%. <laughs> okay. okay, so it's still low. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's still somewhere. low, but we are getting there. Okay. So slowly we are, in, we are seeing a mix of um, foreign and domestic capital. And our okay. hope is that we can increase the domestic uptake All right. into the asset. And for foreign, I mean, I'm always curious, is that Asia, is that Europe, is that South Africa? Is it yeah. Is um, it North America? So it's pretty much everywhere. It's everywhere. So okay. we have Europe, North America, um, increasingly as people looking to Asia for okay. returns. And I think Asia is also looking at emerging markets and uh, we sit smack in the middle of emerging markets. So I'm sure you every day you just say as they're fighting out there and Trump is making chaos for everybody, bring your money to Africa. That's your key uh, thing. That's my key thing. Okay, okay. fine. Let's understand where, the, where this money is coming from. I think, sorry, our graphics team can put up uh, chart number one on report two. So we're seeing the bulk of the money is actually... 
um, come, going into different sectors, financial services tends to take a, a bigger chunk of yes. the money. Where is the money going to? What, what sectors are getting the bulk of the deals? So the report that you're referring to is a 2017-2018 tracking report okay. so that looks at the deals that played in that space. Right? Yes. And uh, for that period, uh, the last two years, there's been a lot of M&A um, activity in financial service sector. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we're seeing a lot of capital going into. And this is across the region. Um, of course, Kenya will take a significantly higher percent of that, but right. um, that's the, the reflection. Okay. So after FS, I think the other sector that's quite attractive is agribusiness, investing agri -business. across the value chain of agriculture, maybe not so much um, up. Okay, Eva, what does that mean? Value chain of agriculture. Yes, am I, am so I the person who's, uh, who's, who's, uh, who's planting maize? No, so, <laughs> uh, okay, there's those who will put money in that um, direct um, okay. food generation and everything. But I think increasingly we're looking at creating finished goods that are manufa not manufactured but processed locally for um, export or even domestic consumption. So, you know, uh, especially East African governments, they're very keen okay. on finished product export so okay. changing from raw material export so instead of coffee beans I grind it and then I export coffee that's exactly, made in Kenya. Exactly, exactly. So that's the okay. value chain and, and there's different okay. spaces. And there's different spaces. Including but the supply including chain. Including the supply that. chain. Yeah. So where's the majority of the demand? Like, give me, help me understand. Would it be in coffee growing? Would it be in avocado growing? Would it be in processing um, raw fruit into pulp, into juice? Where, where's, where's the demand really? At least for our kind of institutional capital, we feel that it would be in the processing space. Processing, processing okay. And, uh, finished good uh, production space. Okay, and finished goods. And that's because uh, for the longest time, we already have the raw materials. Okay. But it's only now that probably East Africa is starting to take seriously um, the value of finished goods as a commodity that oh, would and then the creating top. markets. Uh, yeah. What yeah. about refrigeration? Because I've seen what's happening between Kenya and China, and then the, the, there's a new market with regards to avocado. So is that a space where people are willing to invest in? I, I do know people who've done, uh, and that's an interesting one, uh, we tend to look at refrigeration and logistics, which oh, goes okay. into infrastructure. Logistics, and, all right. Yes, um, and it is one of the emerging areas oh, wow. for, for investors. Uh, okay. Just looking at how do we play in the infrastructure space, creating cold chain storages uh, yes. and warehousing. Wow. So there's just a lot. We yes. really need to interact with you again. Yes. But then let me just quickly take you back to financial services. So is it mobile lending? Where's the money going into when you talk about financial services? One, one or two sectors, uh, sub-sectors within this industry. Where's the money going to? All right. So it used to be traditional banks previously. And I think we've seen a few private equity deals in traditional banking. Just this year, Prime Bank was acquired by African Investment Catalyst. Yes. Um, and then last year, there was an investment into Britain by, again, African Invest. Yes. That's one of the few public market transactions by private equity. Wow. Um, but so traditional banking um, okay. still has an opportunity. Okay. Traditional insurance. Still traditional has insurance. So, okay. um, but then increasingly, there's more, especially venture capital, that's getting into the mobile lending space so you've seen the likes of Tala and branch yes and them. they okay. have uh, a bit of private equity support all right um, and uh, obviously they there's they're doing well because there's demand for those products and wow. we as investors are there to support that kind of okay business. so interesting and then I think maybe my final question again we've run so we've run running out of time and there's just so much to learn here okay. I mean if I'm an investment company today or I mean Kenyans are very entrepreneurial yeah and people are, are, are looking for new ways to be able to tap into technology to create products and services yeah. how would you tell them what are considerations do they need to have in mind if they're building a business and they want to attract capital and secondly what's the most common form of capital would it be equity would it be debt and what are investors considering when they're coming into this space? All right, so I'll start with the first question. Where are the growth opportunities, right? Um, so where we're seeing is um, Kenya still has a lot, and you've uh, rightly put it, we are quite entrepreneurial. Um, I think as, an invest, as a person looking to attract investment, what you need to be aware of is we are risk um, capital. We also look at risk. Okay. Um, so you need to have your books in order. Wow. Uh, we don't mind supporting you. Okay. Um, but we would like to see that you have at least taken the 
the start uh, to, to get your books in order and everything. So audited accounts? Uh, uh, that would help. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but having said that, even the entrepreneurs that are starting up, there's still capital that would support them. Wow. So that's one. And then the other one is growth opportunities for your business. Um, we still understand that you as the entrepreneur own the business and you have the vision and we are there to support you. Um, but we're increasingly seeing people who are playing in the mass market. Okay. W so mass market yeah. and fast moving goods. Yes. And then finally okay. is how are we able to is there a way we can leapfrog technology within your business? Okay. Uh, use technology wow. to leapfrog your business. Just before you continue, my yeah. final, final, my very final question, because we have to come to the end of this. There's always the consideration, if I open up uh, my equity to somebody else, I will be diluted or even kicked out of my own company. Yeah. What's the one thing that you tell people that you're interacting with to be able to do to ring fence the opportunity that they've actually created for others? That we're partners. That we're, we're partners. Yes. So they need to look at their legal documentation as yes. well. Yes, okay. we're partners. All right. Uh, we're there to support you with the equity so but they need to be speaking to Eva before you speak to any investors <laughs> well th there's that we're always okay. happy to help them. all right fine. thank you so much Eva for, for coming to, to speak to us we'll certainly be looking out for those reports yeah as a final parting shot is there anything that we must absolutely consider when you're looking at the private equity space uh we are open. We are open. Yeah, okay. we offer both debt okay. and equity. There's players that can do that. Wow. And the EAVC can support anyone who's looking to interact with bank space. Wow. Thank you once again yeah, very much. No there you have it. The place for all this information and all the data that you need before you speak to investors or if you're looking for investment opportunities. That's the East Africa Venture Capital Association. Eva Wariga is an executive director there. There's a lot that she's told us. She's told us that private equity and the VC space is becoming quite emergent, 13 to about 18 percent um, internal rate of return that's a very good return that we are seeing there but most importantly if you're a Kenyan you're an entrepreneur and you want to start setting up something you certainly need to get in touch with her to understand what are the investment opportunities when people put up equity into your businesses what's happening and finally agribusiness and financial services this is some, some of the very attractive areas that we're seeing capital flowing into we end up our show and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow look out for our end of day statistics and we are always running live on Facebook and on our YouTube YouTube page and that's Metropole TV. Thank you and good afternoon.